Hello everyone, my name is Zachary Rodier and welcome to a special edition of Campus View here on Buckeye TV. And we have a lot of hard pressing news that we have to discuss today with our great guests. Welcome to the show. Why don't you guys each introduce yourself starting with for this guest. Hi everybody, my name is Megan Kaczynski and I am a third year student double majoring in logistics management in Chinese. And what about you in the middle? I'm Frankie. I'm a second year marketing student here in Fisher, and I'm a member of Alpha Phi. And what about you right next to me? Um, my name is Michael Zussman. I am a second year student. I am specializing in accounting for business administration, and I have a minor in computer science and information. Well, thank you guys so much for being here today. And we're first going to start out with something that's been going around campus, rolling around, giving a lot of people a lot of joy when they're going around campus, but some may notice that there's joy no more. Due to the recent war in Ukraine against Russia as well, the Yandex robots that were run by a Russian company are on campus no more for the Grubhub robots. And I want to get your guys' thoughts on those issues right now as a lot of people were using these robots for convenience and also a lot of people just had joy stopping them, messing with them and having a little fun with them. What are your thoughts? We'll start with you, Megan on what it is walking around campus anymore with no little running robots on the ground. Well, I've never actually like used robots myself, but like they're so fun to just like see around because they're out there doing their little jobs. And I know that um, before, I think it was like in January, they got like more robots before they got like taken away and they had like, they were designed differently. They're just cute little friends, I don't know. And some of them had those like faces on them and some of them, especially when the snow was going around, they were going on the ice, powering through that hard weather. And what about you, Michael? We'll start with you. I've heard from different students that the food started to get cold in the cold winter. And I mean, the convenience was there at some point, but also no one wants cold food. Yeah, I also have never actually used the robots myself, so I can't um, talk specifically on whether the food was cold or not. Um, but I definitely think that the robots were an asset on campus, but I think also that it's important for us to do our part, um, politically speaking and uh, socially speaking, in helping support Ukraine and levying sanctions against Russia. And what about you? The, the convenience was there. Sometimes a lot of the students on campus, they were doing some work. They were at the library. They wanted that convenience. Now they don't have that anymore. Instead, they have to pay for additional delivery from someone, I can't believe we're saying this, but real people, people don't understand that anymore uh, with how technology has come around. But how about that convenience that's no longer going to be there? Yeah, I think it was definitely helpful. I've used them, I think I used one once when I was at the library and I needed like a water or something. And it was really convenient as opposed to me walking. But um, I also live off campus, so I don't normally use one. Um, but yeah, I think they were super convenient, but I think we'll be able to make it work without them for sure. And Megan, if they ended up putting these robots into off-campus living as well, do you think that was something that you would end up using? I mean, probably, but like, I try not to Grubhub, it's Grubhub, right? Yeah. I try not to Grubhub that much because you know, I like gotta eat on a budget, but um, <laughs> it's like, I feel like that would be fun, but like they might go missing or something like that because like you can't really like monitor that stuff off campus, but like I think that'd be so convenient. And myself personally, when I use the robot, I live on campus, it was more of like a type of fun, if that makes sense, of you did it once and a lot of people never did it again. Um, but Michael, what about, how do you think Ohio State and Grubhub can start to get that convenience back? The staffing issues with COVID were a thing with different restaurants not having a lot of their menu options. We look at Curl Patio. They haven't been open for a while. How do you think Ohio State and Grubhub can start to move forward and try and get the convenience back to the students' hands? Um, listen, I think we just need to find a new company that can provide the same services that Yandex did. Um, there's a lot of American companies that are, I believe, more than capable of providing those services, perhaps not with the same exact robots. So there will have to be a new investment in technology um, but I believe it's a good thing that um, Ohio State is helping with the sanctions against Russia, and I believe that we'll be able to get different robots back, hopefully pretty soon. And do you think it was a problem with how many people were messing with these robots 
and some people, you know, they were waiting for food and it ended up, instead of being 20 minutes, it ended up being an hour because people just kept on stopping them for fun, especially with the different numbered robots. Yeah, I think I'd personally when I would walk through campus I would see people like jump in front of them and like think it's funny to like make them stop because they obviously can't go if you know people are in their path but yeah I think that was a problem and it probably took longer for food to get there and I think it's the same convenience I do Grubhub a lot living off campus and um, just with people driving it's pretty convenient so I think it gets the job done with or without them and another topic that we are seeing on campus this week in campus view is the mask mandate has been lifted after spring break and everyone's starting to see their faces for the first time in two years here on campus in classes, the union, the gym as well. Michael, <coughs> let's first get your thoughts on what it means to finally take the masks off on campus. Um, I really think it's honestly a great thing that the mandate was lifted. I believe that if someone wants to continue wearing a mask for their own safety, that's perfectly within reason, that's their choice. Uh, if they have family members that are at risk or something like that, uh, I think that's perfectly reasonable, of course, of action. But for the general population, I think it's a great thing that mask mandates were lifted. I think it's important for um, students' emotional development uh, and social development that we get to see each other's faces and uh, get to see each other's expressions when we talk to each other in class, outside of class. So I think the lifting of the mandate is a good thing. And for either of you, how important, I don't know if you go to the gym that often here on campus or off campus, but how important is it to finally, especially if people are doing treadmills or on the bikes, to finally take those masks off as well to try and make it a little easier? Uh, I really enjoy it because like, um, when I'm like weight training, I go to the gym like every day. When I'm weight training, I don't really care, but like when I'm like running, like I remember like last semester, I like pulled down my mask because I was like gasping for breath. And then like a worker came up to me and was like, pull up your mask and I was like literally wheezing. So I don't have to worry about that anymore, which is really good. That's great, and one thing also is when the campus mask mandate also came off, it also went around around campus and off campus as well in the city of Columbus. We'll be right back here on Campus View with more topics, and first we'll get into the sports right after this. <laughs> 